His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Armana Milkunyan, Ambassador of the Republic of Armenia, Distinguished Dr. Ismail Saeeddin, the Director of the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, Distinguished Dr. Geoffrey Robert, on behalf of the participants, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth international symposium, Printing and Publishing in the Languages and Countries of the Middle East. It is great pleasure to see distinguished scholars and experts in the history of printing from all over the world, and particularly from the Arab world, debating the history of printing in the, in the Middle East. The history of Middle Eastern printing has long been a neglected subject. Therefore, a series of Sumbizi has been launched. The first accompanying a major exhibition on the subject at the Gutenberg Museum in Mainz 2002. The second was held in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris in 2005, and the third was at the University of Leipzig in 2008. All these were in the view of, mo of the most participants useful and successful. But this symposium at the Bibliothèque Alexandrina has a special importance, as it is the first to be held in the Middle East itself, offering a new opportunity for scholars from Arab and other Middle Eastern countries to present their research and expertise on this increasingly important topic in intellectual and material history. In addition, in conforming with the objectives of the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, which are the world's window on Egypt and Egypt's window on the world special session, was devoted to the history of <coughs> printing in Armenia on the occasion of the selection of Yerevan, the capital of Armenia, as world book capital for 2012. Now I would like to invite Dr. Ismail Sraeddin, the director of the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, to give his speech. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Library of Alexandria, the Bibliotheca Alexandrina. A special welcome, of course, to His Excellency Armin Melkonian, Ambassador of the Republic of Armenia, and a very special welcome to Professor Jeffrey Roper, the founder of this eminent series of symposia and the guiding force behind it. And not only do you initiate this program together, but it's also very appropriate that there should be a very special place in this effort for Armenia, and therefore we welcome all our Armenian friends who are here, and we thank the ambassador and Armenia for the marvelous exhibition which we will be seeing soon. As my colleague Ahmed Mansour mentioned, Yerevan was selected by UNESCO as the world book capital in 2012, and I was reminded by uh, uh, Mr. Roper that in fact that is uh, to match 500 years after the first Armenian book was published, but since uh, it was published in 1512 in Venice, and he tells me that the first Arabic book published in Europe was in 1514, so we should have a very special event again here, to which I hope you will all come in 1514. Whether or not UNESCO chooses to create it, the Library of Alexandria will commit itself to doing something here. Now, I am not a specialist in this field, and we will hear more uh, from our two distinguished guests, but I thought it may interest the public here to reflect on some parallels and divergences between Armenian and Alexandrian Egyptian history. Uh, if we go back to antiquity, we in Alexandria consider the glory of the city's greatness to have been in the three centuries of its founding when the ancient library was the beacon of learning and the Pharos of Alexandria was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And this also approximates the same period of Armenian splendor under Tigran the Great, which was from 140 to 55 BC. So roughly, we are talking interesting parallels here, although distant from each other. In the Middle Ages, we all know that Alexandria's heyday was to decline with the advent of Roman power. From Cleopatra to Hypatia, it was a period of decline where Alexandria was only a shadow of its former self. 
the Dark Ages would start in the fifth century, and then rebirth would come after the Arab invasion of 641 AD, but the seat of power and interest would shift from Alexandria to Cairo for over a thousand years. On the other hand, in Armenia, after the Marzapanate period, in 636, so I'm talking 641, 636, it's very close to each other, uh, Armenia emerged as the Emirate of Armenia, an autonomous principality within the Arab Empire. I was kind of reflecting, Mr. Ambassador, you may want to say to the United Arab Emirates that uh, it may be nice to remember that an Emirate of Armenia and maybe uh, some of the oil bounty of the Emirates could help the economy of Armenia today, but I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but it is true that the Emirate of Armenia uh, reuniting Armenian lands previously taken by the Byzantine Empire as well, and it was ruled by a prince of Armenia recognized by the caliph and the Byzantine emperor. It was part of the administrative division uh, Emirate of Armenia, created by the Arabs, which also included parts of Georgia and Caucasus Albania, and uh, it lasted till 884, and uh, then, you know, it regained its independence. Now, uh, uh, those who know Egyptian history uh, would uh, remember that uh, Ahmad ibn Tulun declared independence in 868. So it's quite interesting, 884, 868, again, quite close to what was happening. But divergences occur in the Middle Ages. And the Crusades would see Armenia and the Arabs, led by Salah al-Din on this side, on different sides of the conflicts. But Armenian Cilicia was born then, and Mamluk Egypt would stop the advance of the Mongols and bring a new splendor to Egypt for two centuries. But then this divergence is retaken by parallels because the Ottoman occupation of Egypt and the Ottoman occupation of Armenia, initially benign, became increasingly despotic and problematic in both places. Now modern Egypt, however, has a somewhat different history from the French expedition the arrival, the defeat of the French expedition, the arrival of Muhammad Ali, and then the massive modernization program of Muhammad Ali, the birth of modern Egypt, and the rebirth of Alexandria in the 19th and 20th century as the seat of intellectual power and cosmopolitanism. Even Al-Ahram newspaper was founded in Alexandria. Uh, the uh, first feminist paper was on there. The first films were done here. Uh, first uh, uh, urban waterworks, a lot of things started in Alexandria at the time, and it became a great cosmopolitan city um, throughout the 19th and the early 20th century. This was not the case with uh, uh, Armenia, modern Armenia, but there's one more parallel in that period that I find striking, and I will refer to that as well. Modern Armenian independence came about at the end of the First World War when the Associated Power and Ottoman Empire signed the Treaty of Sèvres. And it promised to maintain the existence of the Armenian Republic and to attach the former territories of Ottoman Armenia to it. And because these new borders were drawn by President Woodrow Wilson, it's sometimes referred to as Wilsonian Armenia the, in the geography. Now, What's important for people to remember is that modern Egyptian independence after the British occupation of Egypt in 1882 started in 1919 by Saad Zaghloul and his colleagues wanting to go and present the case of Egypt to President Wilson at Versailles and insisting that uh, uh, they should go and that was the foundation of what became the Wafd Party the word Waft meaning delegation, like the Indian Congress Party in Congress, the Waft was a delegation, because Saad Zaghloul and his colleagues wanted to present to Wilson the case for the autonomy and independence of Egypt. The British, as you know, then exiled Saad and his colleagues. There was a massive upheaval which became the 1919 revolution of Egypt, and later on a formal recognition by Britain of Egypt's independence in 1922, and then our first uh, new constitution in 1923. 
So again, roughly the same period, many of the same characters, Wilson, Versailles, Seb, the Allies, uh, uh, autonomy and independence being sought at that same time. Sadly, Armenia then fell under the dark cloud of the Soviet Union and it had gone through already very difficult uh, periods of ethnic cleansing and uh, genocide in this uh, 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 period and uh, subsequently, of course, the terrible uh, uh, treatment of Stalin did not spare Armenia. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, uh, some people in common uh, Egyptian parlance say uh, which means that if you treat everybody equally badly that is a form of justice but I think those who lived in the Soviet Union under Stalin would disagree <laughs> this is not at all correct so anyway it was uh, uh, the post-Soviet years were marred by war and economic difficulties but today as Armenia enters the 21st century, it is well on its way uh, to securing stable relations with all its neighbors and can look forward to further flowering of its cultural output. And of course, we in Egypt, as many countries around the world, have benefited from the marvelous diaspora of Armenian talent. Everywhere, in all disciplines, from uh, 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 craftsmanship to intellectual research, from uh, uh, art to philanthropy, um, uh, business to uh, public service, distinguished Armenians have been at the forefront in every country where Armenian communities have been. And throughout that, they've been able to maintain as well, not only their allegiance to the lands where they were, their contributions to the societies where they existed, but also to retain their identity of culture and language and religion. But let us get back a little bit to the topic of this symposium. And the history of Middle Eastern printing, we think, has been a somewhat neglected subject, if I may say, Professor Roper, both compared with printing in the rest of the world and compared with manuscript studies in the uh, Middle East. Uh, we have been holding annual conferences on manuscripts in the Library of Alexandria, very distinguished uh, participation, and it's a much bigger topic here than printing. And therefore, this really addresses a, a major lacuna in both attention and knowledge. And thus, I hope it's going to contribute to raising the level of interest, facilitate exchanges of information and insights among widely dispersed community of scholars uh, that are involved in this field. So, as my colleague said, uh, Professor Roper really has uh, been the driving force between a number of these events before in Gutenberg Museum in Mainz in 2002 and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris in 2005, and for those of our guests who don't know this, we are a very, very close partner of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, and we're very proud to say that we are the fourth largest francophone library in the world outside of France. Bigger than Quebec, bigger than Belgium, bigger than practically everybody else. We have over 540,000 volumes of French literature, thanks to our collaboration with the Bibliothèque Nationale de France which hosted the symposium in 2005 and the University of Leipzig in 2008. And uh, everybody was very, I think, pleased with these events. And in fact, two volumes have appeared already from Oxford University Press. Now, the papers presented uh, really contribute to building a corpus of knowledge and understanding of this topic of Middle Eastern intellectual and social history which has focused as said, more on manuscripts and then more on philosophy, but actually printing doesn't, uh, 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 has not taken its rightful place and we hope that your symposium will remedy this. And I'm encouraged by that, by the level of interest shown in this symposium, and it th I think it says that the moment is ripe to really launch a bigger effort in this. And since we were just reminded a moment ago 
that the first Arabic book was in, in, two, in 1514, so maybe we can do a reprise uh, two years from now, Professor Roper, so you're all invited again. This symposium addresses the past, present, and future of printing in the countries and languages of the Middle East. It is therefore the fourth in a series, but nevertheless addresses a new topic and sets a special uh, uh, focus on this area, offering a new opportunity for scholars from Arab and Middle Eastern countries to participate. And I think this is very important for us. We see this very much as the role of the Library of Alexandria. Before I cede my place to learned people who know a lot more about this than I do, I thought there's one more thing I should tell you about linking the past to the present. And we all use the word symposium. But I'm not sure you all know the origin of that word. Interestingly enough, in ancient Greece, the symposium was a party. Actually, a drinking party, but it was a party. And uh, there are literary works that describe uh, events that take place uh, in symposia, two Socratic dialogues, Plato's symposium, Xenophon's symposium, all describe that. And a number of Greek poems, including elegies, that address this. Now, uh, Greek and Etruscan art shows symposia people drinking and debating and talking and enjoying themselves. And this finds itself continuing in the Roman period in the Roman convivium, where people would meet, drink, and talk. And uh, conviviality, convivium, conviviality, and therefore, uh, symposium, in other words, is to have good fun together while discussing and debating topics of interest. Now, the modern meaning, unfortunately, has become much more austere. It's uh, a conference for researchers, not always academics, to present and discuss their work. Together with academic and scientific journals, conferences are an essential part of the academic and research enterprise. But I would hope, somehow, that our symposium would combine the idea of conviviality and fun along with the idea of research and seriousness. So I appreciate your honoring us in the Library of Alexandria, and I wish you a wonderful, convivial, and productive symposium. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ismail. So, um, as we said, on the, um, on the occasion of the selection of Yerevan, the capital of Armenia, as World Book Capital for 2012, a special celebration for this occasion is happening in the Bibliotheca Alexandrina. So I would like to invite His Excellency Dr. Armin Milkunian, the Armenian ambassador to Egypt, to give his talk. Honorable Dr. Ismail Seragel-Din, Director of Biblioteca Alexandrina, distinguished participants of the symposium, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Before I present my homework to you, I would like to express my impression that I get right now from the speech of Dr. Ismail Sera Gildin and how he reviewed the history of my country, of Armenia, in that speech in details and making parallels with Egyptian history, a country with whom we have the best relations and historic traditional uh, ties. Thank you for that. And even touching the period of Wilsonian uh, time and the Wilsonian case, it was very impressive and I appreciate it very much and I'm sure everybody here was hearing your that report with great interest and attention. 
Now I go to my homework. And you, make, you, you made my work <laughs> easier. So I'm not going to uh, review once again the details of the historical side of the uh, case. It's a great honor for me to be among you today and take participation in the inauguration ceremony of the fourth international symposium for printing and publishing in the languages and countries of the Middle East. It's really exciting to see that this special event brought together so many prominent professionals from different countries. The credit, of course, goes to the organizers of the symposium, who didn't spare efforts to make this event a success, as well as to the venue of the symposium, to Biblioteca Alexandrina itself, which possesses magnificent force of gravity for all those who love and respect knowledge and wisdom. A pioneer in promoting books and printing, it shines as a beacon in the international world of, li of libraries dedicated to the spread of knowledge of humanity in its past, present, and future manifestations. I am extremely, extremely proud that Armenia, the country that I represent here, has been significantly and in an active manner involved in the works of this symposium. A number of Armenian scholars will make their presentations at the symposium. One of its workshops is dedicated to the Armenian printing and publishing. Moreover, an exhibition of ancient Armenian books arrived from depositories of Yerevan museums and libraries will be inaugurated immediately after this opening session. However, this is not the first occurrence of cooperation between the Biblioteca Alexandrina and Armenian libraries. In February 2006, the Library of Alexandrina, Alexandria hosted an exhibition of Armenian medieval manuscripts dedicated to the 16th hundred anniversary of the invention of the Armenian alphabet and the conference on Armenian Egyptian historical cultural links. Seizing this opportunity on behalf of the Minister of Culture of the Republic of Armenia and myself, I express deep gratitude personally to Honorable Dr. Ismail Serageldin, the administration and staff of the Biblioteca Alexandrina, organizing committee of the symposium, Dr. Ahmed Mansour, head of the Calligraphy Center, and all those thanks to whom a special role has been allocated to Armenia in the framework of this international symposium. Of course, there are solid reasons for such approach as Dr. Sarah Geldin mentioned in his speech. Particularly, next year we celebrate the 500th anniversary of Armenian book printing. Moreover, UNESCO has declared Yerevan the world book capital for 2012. Numerous events, exhibitions, conferences, festivals, seminars will take place worldwide and particularly in Armenia, thus marking those unique occasions. I hope many of you will have opportunity to take part in these celebrations. However, all of you are welcome to visit in 2012 Yerevan, book capital of the world. Actually, the mentioned exhibition is heading the long list of events dedicated to the 500th anniversary of Armenian book printing. It is symbolic that it starts exactly in Alexandria, a city to where founders of Armenian literature and sciences used to travel for their studies in early centuries of the first millennium AD. 
Back in Armenia, we give great importance to these celebrations, both on governmental and public level. Armenians have the deepest reverence for books, which goes back centuries and comes from the times when the first Armenian book was written in the newly created Armenian alphabet in the fifth century. Such significant jubilees and undertakings are excellent opportunity, particularly for connecting younger generations to book reading. We take such opportunities to put our libraries in order, to renovate them and open new ones. We are also looking forward to present in a wider way our literary heritage to the world. Through centuries, the Armenian thought and spirit created masterpieces which deserve international attention and recognition. Once again, I would like to thank everybody who contributed to make this symposium happen and wish all participants fruitful discussions and pleasant stay in the beautiful city of Alexandria. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Dr. Armen Melkinian. Now I would like to invite Dr. Geoffrey Robert, who founded this type of symposium, I think, eight years ago, in order to give his speech. Please, Professor Roper. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very good to be back here in Alexandria, and especially in this great and wonderful library. I was privileged some 10 or more years ago to be among the friends of the Alexandria Library in Great Britain, which helped to promote this grand project in its formative stages. Seeing it again now, uh, I find that it never ceases to amaze, not just because of its stupendously exciting building, but also because of the bold and admirable aims and objectives which it set itself. This library was created to promote the ideal of universal knowledge, and even more important, universal access to knowledge. This is, of course, inseparable from freedom of thought and expression, so vital to liberation and progress everywhere, not least in Egypt. The embodiment of free and creative expression and the texts which it produces has historically been the book in all its different forms. Now, most perceptions of the history of the Middle Eastern and Islamic book have until quite recently focused almost entirely on manuscripts. The role of printing has been largely ignored or relegated to the margins. But if we're to understand the significance of the book in history, not as something static and unchanging, but as part of the development of society, varying between different times and places and embodying elements of both continuity and change, then we must study all its forms and methods of production and their social and intellectual implications. This means paying more attention to printing and its history because the introduction and use of printing had profound effects on Middle Eastern and Muslim societies, just as it had earlier done in Europe and elsewhere in the world at a crucial stage of their development. The history of printing in the Middle East and Europe is the story of a 500-year exchange of ideas, technology, imagery, and design. Arabs and Muslims adopted printing long before Gutenberg, but did not use it for book production. The first printed books containing Middle Eastern languages appeared in Europe and played a part there in the development of the scientific and philosophical enlightenment. Some were also exported back to the Middle East, but Middle Easterners themselves in due course in inaugurated their own printing presses in their own countries, which played a crucial part in their intellectual and social history in the early modern period. Attention to Middle Eastern and Muslim printing history has grown considerably in recent years, but it remains necessary to maintain and raise the level of interest in this long neglected field. For this purpose, I and a small international group of scholars nearly 10 years ago launched a series of symposia on the subject. The first was at the Gutenberg Museum in Mainz in Germany in 2002, uh, the second at the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in 2005, the third at the University of Leipzig in 2008. So this present symposium here in Alexandria is the fourth one 
and I, might say, and I may say that it's much the largest so far. It has a special importance being the first of the series to be held in the Middle East itself and offering a new opportunity, as has already been mentioned, for scholars from Arab countries to present their own research and expertise on this increasingly important topic in intellectual and material history. But the participation and coverage are not confined to the Arab world. Other Middle Eastern countries and areas are also represented at this international gathering. Especially noteworthy this time is the Armenian contribution, marking the forthcoming 500th anniversary of the first Armenian printed book. Now, much has been made of the role of the new electronic media in helping to create the conditions for the momentous movements of social and political change earlier this year, which have been called the Arab Spring. But we should remember that in this respect, history is repeating itself. The advent of the printing press in earlier centuries also enabled the reawakening, or nahta, of the peoples of the Middle East. So this is a very good time to be examining again this crucial factor in the human development of the region. That is what we should be doing over the next three days, and I should like to give my heartfelt thanks to our hosts here in Alexandria, the director, Dr. Saragadine, and, uh, and Dr. Mansour, the organizer of the symposium, and all the participants for making it possible. Thank you very much indeed. al -fushuk. Finally, the Bibliotheca Alexandrina is very appreciative of, of the generosity of our donors, and a sincere thank you is extended to the following organization for their generosity. The Armenian Embassy, the Armenian Orthodox Barkiraklik, Société Générale Arménienne de Bienfaisance et du Coeur, Nobar Press, Braille Publishing, and the Special Project Department. Thank you. I would like to invite Dr. Smarsagli and His Excellency, Dr. Armin Mekunian and Professor Robert to open the exhibition of the old Armenian books. Please.
لا يمكن لاحد نس نس عفوا اسف فقط بدي اطلع على الكاميرا صح؟ ما شاء الله نهاد ندم مدير منتجات الابداع بشركه وين سوفت ومصمم جرافيك نهاد ندم مدير منتجات الابداع بشركه وين سوفت ومصمم اعلاني مع دخول الحاسوب لكل مجالات الحياه بدات الاجيال الجديده تنسى الخط العربي وجمال الخط العربي ف أنا وكثير ناس مثلي لقينا أنه من واجبنا إدخال الخط العربي للحاسوب لحتى ممكن نرجع جمال الخط العربي. طيب ونوقف شوي. اللهم صل على النبي. 3 نهاد ندم مدير منتجات الإبداع بشركة وين سوفت ومصمم إعلانات. الخط العربي بدا يندثر بعد ما دخل الحاسوب على كل مجالات الحياه وخاصه على التعليم وبدا نلاقي اجيال جديده ما بتعرف شيء عن الخط العربي وحتى بتعتبره خط بس للتراث او لللوحات او ممكن يستخدم فقط للقران الكريم لكن اذا 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 بنبحث شوي بالخط العربي بنلاقي انه الموضوع اكبر من هيك بكثير وتاريخ العرب كان المسلمين والعرب اخذوا امجادهم بشكل كثير كبير بسبب الفن اللي كان عندهم. هذا الفن بدا بدانا ننساه وبدا يطلع عندنا خط عربي غريب الشكل وكله بسبب الحاسوب. فالحل اللي لقيناه مناسب هو انه ندخل الخط العربي على الحاسوب. لكن حيكون عندنا كثير مشاكل برمجيه لحتى يدخل الخط العربي بكل قواعده وبكل جمالياته ليصير خط حاسوبي. وهذا الشيء اللي بدانا نشتغل عليه من اكثر من 10 سنوات. وصلنا لبعض النتائج الجميله ولوحاتي هون هي مجرد تجارب لمحاكاه لوحات عالميه بالخط العربي لكن باستخدام خط حاسوبي شكرا
My name is Garnik Harutunyan. I'm an associate researcher in the Matena Daran, Mashtot Institute of Ancient Manuscripts uh, in Yerevan, Armenia, and also PhD student in Yerevan State University, the Faculty of Theology. The purpose of our exhibition was to show uh, the examples of Armenian printing tradition, which was one among the nations of the Middle East. The exhibits were chosen from Matena Daran, Mashtot Institute of Ancient Manuscripts, and Charens Institute uh, and Museum of uh, Literature and Art. Uh, we, we have chosen uh, um, examples from printed in many centers uh, of Armenian printing uh, tradition, like from Venice uh, to Constantinople, Echmiadzin, New Julfa, uh, and uh, other centers of Euro Europe and Asia. Uh, the content of uh, ancient printed books are, uh, is uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, uh, connected with the contents of uh, the exhibits. We can see the, all the variety of uh, Uh, due to this exhibition, we can see all the variety of contents of the uh, old Armenian printing. There are uh, religious and secular uh, uh, literature uh, examples, such as Bibles, Gospels, uh, books of prayers, historical books, uh, and also dictionaries, uh, even translated from other languages. Uh, we should... Uh, and we should em emphasize that there are many uh, different uh, fonts uh, used uh, even from the first printing examples uh, like Yerkatagir, Bolorgir, Notergir and uh, there are many uh, colors used uh, during the printing uh, like uh, red, black, mostly black and uh, there are many engraves uh, made on uh, especially uh, valuable uh, printing examples. Moment. Our first exhibit is called Ahtark in Armenian, and it was printed by Hakob Merapart, the founder of the Armenian uh, printing tradition. It was printed in 1513 in Venice, and it is a collection of prayers and magic words. We can see here that there are two color printing here, uh, re red and black, and it was uh, founded just by the founder of the Armenian printing tradition. Uh, Hakob Merapart printed five books, and the first one was printed in 1512, and this, our exhibit, was printed just uh, one year after uh, the ex establishing of Armenian printing. Uh, all the fonts uh, that can, we can see here are taken from uh, Armenian manuscripts, and Armenian printing tradition with its roots goes to uh, Armenian manuscript tradition. And uh, even researchers uh, for researchers, it is not easy to uh, uh, differ uh, if it is uh, the manuscript of, of, or a printed book, because the first printed books are very, very similar to manuscripts that uh, were written of, uh, at that time. Uh, the second exhibit is an Armenian Latin uh, dictionary, which, which was printed in 1633 uh, three, uh, by Francesco Rivola. Okay. Our second exhibit uh, was printed in Paris in 1633. It is a dictionary of uh, Armenian, it is our, an Armenian Latin dictionary of Francesco Rivola, and it was important for Armenian clergy to know Latin because uh, most of uh, theological uh, studies were written uh, in Latin language of the, at that time. Okay. 
This is the first Armenian printed Bible, which was printed in 1666 uh, by Voskan Yerevansi in Amsterdam. Uh, it is valuable also for its engraves, uh, which, uh, the author of which uh, is uh, Christopher van Zichem, a, a German engraver uh, who was influenced by Albrecht Dürer. Uh, in, on this page, we can see uh, the first Armenian uh, sentence translated uh, by Mesrop Mashtots in 405, uh, the, who was the founder of Armenian alphabet. Okay. Yeah. This is a gospel printed in 1698 in Amsterdam and uh, here we can uh, obviously see uh, the connection of manuscript and printed Armenian book. You can see that the gospel is decorated by silver and precious stones. Uh, uh, in the center uh, is the crucifixion and in four corners we can see the symbols of four evangelists, John, Luke, Matthew and Mark. Uh, and there are uh, four angels uh, around the cross of Christ. The next book is called, is named, mm, the next book is titled um, The next book is titled Sharaknot. It is a collection of Armenian spiritual works. It was printed in 1742 in Constantinople, Istanbul where Armenian had many printing houses. Uh, it is valuable for its engraves uh, because the author of, the, of those engraves was Grigor Marzvanetsi. He lived in the end of 17th and in the beginning of 18th century and he was the first Armenian engraver. Uh, here we can, we can see also his signature which shows that, uh, which shows, uh, that uh, it was he, uh, one of his first books. Uh, a collection of Armenian spiritual sh songs, Charaknots, uh, began from the fifth century. Uh, the founders of Armenian literature, St. Mesrop Mashtot and St. Sahak Partep, the Catholic uh, of Armenia. Okay. The Pagriccio wants Armenian printer, printer, printed not only uh, books, the books of Armenian authors, but also of uh, of foreign authors. Uh, Armenian publishers printed not only the works of Armenian authors, but also uh, for uh, the, the works of foreign authors, such uh, like uh, the book about the causes. Uh, written by Aristotle and translated into Armenian. It was printed in 1750. Okay. Moses Bab Tetra Kokochi Hordurakna. The first printing house in Armenia was founded in 1771 by Simeon Yerevansi, uh, Catholicus of Armenia. And here we can see uh, one book printed in that house in 1774. It is a book of spiritual holidays. Tanur. Meč. 
There are many interpretations of books of Bibles in Armenian spiritual lit uh, literature, and uh, this one uh, is interpretation of Psalms of David, uh, written by uh, Vartan Barzabersi. It was printed in 1797 uh, in Astrakhan, Russia, where was a large Armenian community. In Chev. And new books are being found until now. The first period of Armenian printing tradition uh, begins uh, in 1512 and ends in uh, 1080, uh, 800, uh, sorry, 800, <laughs> from the beginning, uh, from the beginning, The first and oldest period of Armenian printing uh, includes the time during 1512 and uh, 1800, and more than, more than 1200 uh, units of books were printed during that time. Uh, though new units of Armenian old books are uh, being found even until now. Okay. Հայաստանի մշակույթի նախարարության նախաձեռնության 2008 թվականից անցկացվում է գրանշան անվամ տարատեսակների միջազգային մրցույթ գրանշան հայերենում նշան նշանակում է գրելու նշան դու չես տարկում հա ես պետք է մնչե վերջ խոսամ կա կա I don't know if you can see the same thing. I don't Մրցույթը պարունակում է մի քանի անվանակարգեր, այդ թվում լատինական տարատեսակների, հայկական տեքստային տարատեսակների, հունական տարատեսակների եւ կիրիլյան տարատեսակների անվանակարգեր։ Բացի այդ, մրցույթում նախատեսված է նաեւ մեկ անվանակարգ, ազատ, որpիսի մարտիկ կարողանան ներկայացնել նաեւ ազատ ոճի տարատեսակներ կամ նշանակներ։ Այդ նշանակները կարող են լինել բազմաբնույթ, սկսած օրնամենտներից կամ ծաղկազարդերից եւ որևէ այլ բնույթի նշանակներ։ 2010 թվականից մրցույթի համակազմակերպիչներից է հանդիսանում նաեւ Մյունխենի տպագրական դիզայներների միությունը, որը որի առաջարկությամբ մենք որոշեցինք գրանշանն անցկացնել ուղորդված միայն ոչ լատինական տարատեսակների անվանակարգերին պատճառը նրանում է որ լատինական տարատեսակների մրցույթներ աշխարհում շատ են անցկացվում մինչ դեր այլ լեզվական այբուբենների համակարգերը ինչ որ չափով անտեսված են այդ իսկ պատճառով 2010 թվականից մրցույթի անվանակարգերից հանվեց լատինական տարատեսակների անվանակարգը Եվ մեր մրցույթը անցկացվեց համաշխարային ատապի կոչվող միության հերթական համաժողովին զուգընթաց Իռլանդիայի մայրաքաղաք Դուբլինում։ Հետ այսուն ընդհանրապես որոշվել է, որ մրցույթները անցկացվելու են ատապի համաժողովի ժողովներին զուգընթաց այն երկրներում, որտեղ որ անցկացվելու ատապի հերթական համագումարը։ 
This is a translation from Armenian to English. In 2010, the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of Armenia organized an international type design competition which is held until now. This competition is named Granashan, which means type letter in Armenian. The categories of the competition are Armenian, Kyrillic, Latin, text type faces. Uh, the competition has also a category, uh, display category, where the author uh, can in introduce uh, both art type letter and ornaments. From 2010, a co-organizer of the competition is Munich Typographic Society. Starting from 210, um, it was decided uh, instead of Latin uh, typeface category, uh, insert the Greek typeface category, uh, and the competition was focused uh, on non-Latin alphabet systems, as there are many other contests in that field. From 2010, Granashan is held in those countries where the uh, ATB, in, uh, the International Society of Type and uh, Graphic Designers, uh, is held. In 2010, it was in Dublin, and in 2011, it was held in Reykjavik. In this catalog, the works uh, of members of uh, competition uh, from 2008 to 2010 are collected. Uh, they are the winners of first and second places. And the, this catalog was published uh, with spons sponsorage of the Ministry of Culture of Republic of Armenia. <laughs> 